This video is brought to you in partnership with Audible. Recently, I've been listening to Sleep Sound with Jamie Dornan, and I'll be telling you more about it later. I can't believe your girl is sponsored by Audible. So if you've been following my journey, you know your girl is trying to lose some serious weight. And let's just keep it 100. It can be very frustrating when you hit a weight plateau or it just feels like you're not getting the results you want. But I've realized that during this weight loss journey, during this, you know, lifestyle change, trying to improve my wellness, I've been making some mistakes. And I think these are common mistakes that the majority of us girls are making. And so I wanted to come and talk about it so that we can find a solution together get ourselves back on track, all right? So when I started my weight loss journey, I was barely losing any weight, especially I would say in the first like two, three months of going to the gym four times a week, eating in a caloric deficit. I wasn't making any progress. And I remember having a conversation with Renee and she kind of did a diagnostic on everything that I was doing that may have been affecting my weight loss. And we came to the realization, and this was the first mistake, that I had poor sleep hygiene. Now, if you don't know what sleep hygiene is, it's a term that I came across very recently and it's all about fostering practices which help you to create a great sleep routine, but also that helps improve your quality of sleep as well. There are so many other factors that go into losing weight like hormones, stress levels which affect your hormones, your body's ability to rest and recuperate. And because my sleep, quite frankly, the quality and the routine, trash, non-existent, absolutely poor, all right? D minus. My body wasn't reacting to the effort the way that it should have been. And so recently I have been trying to improve my sleep hygiene by actually creating a sleep routine or an evening routine. If I'm being honest, I found that over the last few years, I have sometimes struggled to quiet my mind and get a good night's sleep because I just have racing, anxious thoughts. But recently, I've been trying to get my mind to focus on something else more calming before bed. So I've been listening to Sleep Sound with Jamie Dornan. I don't know what it is, sis, but from the Irish accent, the soothing tone in his voice, to the calming sounds from all over the world, every episode seems to transport me to a place of calm. Honestly, you can have a listen for yourself on my absolute fave, Audible. If you do not know what Audible is, either you are living under a rock or you don't watch my channel because I have been talking about Audible for so long. I talk about it on the podcast, I talk about it here. Self-awareness is really key. You guys know I talk about it all the time. And in evaluating myself and kind of looking at my strengths and my weaknesses, I have realized that I do not do well with physical books. I actually struggle to read physical books. I absorb information and education amazingly when I'm looking at it, like seeing images and pictures and scenes and videos and all of that, as well as listening. And so I decided a good couple years ago, maybe three years ago, to start using Audible and it has completely changed my life. Audible has a massive catalogue and library of audiobooks, podcasts, just so much content on there, which could help you not only educate yourself or even find great things to listen to in your spare time, but also helping you find things that you can integrate into your lifestyle that actually help your wellness. If you have not signed up to Audible already, all right, tap the link in my description. I will always rep Audible. I will always rep it. I love audiobooks. I love podcasts. I even have one if you didn't know. And soon, maybe somebody's book will be on Audible. It's a really affordable subscription. Just check out the link in my description to find out more about Sleep Sound with Jamie Dornan, as well as finding out more about Audible. They are constantly adding new content. The library is vast. So definitely check out the link in my description. What are you waiting for? And of course, I had to get you a 30 day free trial. After all, what are sisters for? Sleep is one of the things we neglect the most and I think we don't understand and it's, it's actually worth getting educated on just how much not only your body needs sleep but also how much happens to your body whilst you are asleep. There is so much regeneration and cell growth which happens whilst you are asleep that if you disturb your sleep pattern or you have a, an irregular sleep pattern or you lack a good quality of sleep, your body cannot actually heal the way it needs to, grow the way it needs to, as somebody who weight trains at least four times a week, as I'm creating those little micro tears in my muscles, 
they're going to need a time to repair and just eating protein isn't enough. There actually needs to be a time where my muscles repair themselves back together and inevitably grow, which is the aim of like hypertrophy. That happens whilst you are asleep. And so for me, what I noticed was because I was getting less than seven hours of sleep every night, I was going to sleep at different times every evening. I was ignoring my body when it was telling me, you know, sis, babes, ma'am, you are tired go to sleep. Even with traveling, I have to remind myself that if my time zone is going to change, I still have to put in as much effort, if not more so after, you know, the tiring nature of getting on a flight and packing and all the wahala that can come with tra traveling. I have to make even more of an effort to make sure that I get a minimum amount of sleep, at least eight hours for me. You may find that seven hours works for you. I would not actually recommend going less than seven hours. And I know for some people, our main thought is, well, that doesn't fit into my my lifestyle I think you have to decide what your priorities are and if you are investing in your wellness and your weight loss that has to be one of your main priorities and one of your focuses right and that means you're going to have to make sacrifice and sometimes because of you know different cultural rhetorics and narratives that we have heard we think that sleep isn't something that is a sacrifice, you know, putting myself to bed, that's a reward, it's not a sacrifice. But sometimes getting yourself disciplined enough to have a good sleep routine or, you know, good sleep hygiene, that's the sacrifice, the discipline of having to go to bed early enough, having to, you know, come home early enough. And you kind of have to reverse engineer these things, right? If you know you need to be up by a certain time because you have to go to work or you have other commitments and responsibilities, once you reverse engineer that, okay, if I wanna get eight hours of sleep before I wake up at 7 a.m., I need to be asleep by 11 o'clock but for most of us when we go to bed we're not just going to go to fall asleep you know we're going to be tip tapping on our phone we're going to be listening to sleep sound with Jamie Dornan and so all of these things add to our time but if you are going to get eight hours of sleep and you need to wake up at seven you need to be asleep by 11 which may mean you need to actually be in bed by 10 30 or 10 and that means that you need to prepare to go to sleep from 9 30 or 9 you know if you're gonna have a shower or whatever that is and so i think it's important for us to really take time to realize that if we don't put the boundaries if we don't put the plans and we don't put the systems in place to actually fall asleep on time we're not going to fall asleep on time it doesn't just magically happen and i think with weight loss it's very easy to know things but just not put them into practice and what I was noticing was I didn't lose a single pound of weight and as somebody with PCOS managing your stress levels really matters and if you don't sleep your body's stress levels are immediately elevated your cortisol levels or your stress hormones are immediately elevated but along with your stress hormones your hunger hormones aka ghrelin also rise when you have not slept well. Have you ever noticed that you are more hungry when you have not slept well at night? And then that leads us to be more tempted to step out of our caloric deficit or become less satisfied with the food that we have allocated ourselves during our diet as we are on this weight loss journey and so it really does send you on a downward spiral to just not get a great night's sleep if you're going to have a great day it starts the night before and investing in your sleep routine investing in your evening routine and being strict with yourself about that is important on this weight loss journey as much as you may tell yourself okay i'm going to be disciplined with going to the gym also be disciplined around your food and also be disciplined around your sleep how are you going to be effective in your workout how are you going to push yourself to failure if you haven't even got the energy in the first place because you are exhausted change that <laughs> okay change that the next thing for me and this is actually quite a big one and an interesting one based on my last video i did about reverse dieting is simply not eating enough and i know that this will sound crazy because you know weight loss calorie deficit less food but actually because of the fad diets and the tips that exist within you know the land of diet culture a lot of us have been told to drastically cut our calories in order to lose weight and regardless being in a caloric deficit should all factors considered and all things being equal lead to weight loss and obviously the less calories you consume you would think the more weight you would lose but at the end of the day one thing you need to understand is even if you hate your body your body loves your body, it loves its life, okay? Your body is fighting to survive. It is fighting to protect you. It is fighting to keep you 
going. And sometimes if you starve your body, and I'm, I'm not saying this in the sense of you don't eat any food, but you are not eating enough, you're not eating enough food, you're not eating enough, uh, you're not getting enough micro or macronutrients, your body is going to kick itself into starvation mode, it's going to kick itself into survival mode, which is don't lose any of this fat because she's not going to feed us. And if we don't know the next time we're going to get fed, we're going to need to hold on to as much fat as possible. When your body starts working against you, you need to start realizing, ah, things need to change. And that's what I noticed in myself. My body was fighting against me because I wasn't eating enough. My body is literally resisting my effort, not because my efforts are bad, but it's just not good for my body. And so I started to realize that, you know, all these prescriptive TikToks, and we actually did an episode on this on Sunday on the To My Sisters podcast, where we were talking about, you know, the fall of the BBLs and, you know, the end of that era and the emergence of the Lori Harvey body and, you know, the 1200 calorie diet and the 1500 calorie diet or even the 1800 calorie diet. And, you know, I'm not knocking anybody who eats like this and it works for you. Good on you. I think it's absolutely great. Do do whatever you want to do with your bad self. OK, however, I do think it's important for us to realize that we have to do what is good for our own bodies. And I think once you take time to really look at the science and you calculate, you know, your basal metabolic rate and your total daily energy expenditure and you realize how much energy you really need to keep up with the number of workouts your day job running around after your kids if that's what you do you know walking 10,000 steps a day because you're a nurse and you're walking up and down wards you realize that you may realize let me say that you actually need more food than you would have thought and I always say this like people get shocked when I tell them how much I eat and they're like ah like look at the comments under my reverse dieting video right it's very much how could you lose weight and you're eating 2000 calories a day i wasn't losing weight eating 2000 calories a day my body gave up <laughs> like my body was giving up i was hangry all the time i felt like i had low energy levels i i was starting to become afraid of food which was completely counterproductive to the reason why i went on this weight loss journey in the first place which was to repair my relationship with food and teach me healthier habits but instead i went from one toxic habit of overeating and comfort eating and binge eating to another which was trying to punish my body by withholding food from it right even though people were shocked that okay you're eating 2,000 calories that seems a bit too much for you know a woman or somebody who wants to lose weight babes I am really tall number one number two I am overweight you picking up the remote control my body requires a lot more energy to be able to pick up the remote control and as, as funny and as silly as that sounds you have to embrace the fact that your body right now has its needs and as much as society has taught you to hate your body you still need to cater to your body's needs your body is a machine and even if you feel like it has been failing you even if you feel like you hate the way that machine looks your body is the thing keeping you alive right now and we have to honor those vessels by actually giving it the things that it needs does that mean we don't go on a journey of change absolutely not if you're watching this video i assume it's because you want to lose weight or you're interested in weight loss and so you understand the beauty of change however we cannot completely destroy the machine just because we don't like its present state do you get what i mean and i think sometimes we go on these restrictive diets as a form of not self-destruction because we do it because we're desperate and one thing you need to realize about this weight loss journey is if it's going to be sustainable it has to some degree at some point be enjoyable and it also cannot be something which we do from the mindset of punishment or something that we do from the mindset of now because I want to look like this and maybe you have your goal body I need to eat the same thing that they eat not factoring in the fact that your body has its own separate needs not only am for example I'll use myself not only am I really tall I'm obviously overweight to be able to power my body to do everyday things requires more calories I also have PCOS which means my diet may not be the same as everybody else I have insulin resistant PCOS knowing that about myself also affects my diet all of these I am lactose intolerant knowing that affects my diet and so really taking time to get to know you I think one thing we have to address is the fact that diet culture can sometimes make us really hate our bodies right 
But the truth of the matter is you get you need to get to know this body. You need to get to a point of appreciating this body and really accepting the fact that this is the body you have, right? Yes, the form of it may not be something you want to accept and something you want to change, okay? But at the end of the day, you can't swap this body for somebody else's. I cannot swap my metabolism for Lori Harvey's. And it's not unfortunate or fortunate, it just is what it is. And so I need to get to a point of accepting the fact that I can change this body, but this is the only body that I'm going to have. And so I need to work with the grain, right? If my genetics require this, I need to work with that. If my body requires this much energy, I need to work with that. I need to take it on a journey of responding well to my body's present needs and then making the small changes that are necessary to make this a long-term lifestyle change. And so that is not drastically cutting my calories because that's what I was doing. I was, I realized based on my total daily energy expenditure, I was in a deficit of like 1,500 calories. That's a massive deficit. And you would think somebody who's on a massive deficit like that, why would you not be losing weight? Because my metabolism had adapted. A metabolic adaptation is a very real thing and you should search about it and watch YouTube videos about it. I'll put some links in the description, basically from some of my favorite YouTubers to their channels so that you can watch them. Um, Cause they go more into depth about the science of all of this, but metabolic adaptation is real. Your body will get used to what you make it get used to. So yeah, taking time to realize that you have to do what's good for your body and you have to do what works for you and not eating enough is a big aspect. And this actually also leads to another point, which is not eating enough in terms of portion. Um, even though you are in a caloric deficit, doesn't mean you have to be eating these really tiny portions which don't make you feel full. And it's important to feel full, to feel satiated, to feel like, ah, I just ate and I don't really feel like I need to eat again for another couple of hours. Because if you're constantly hungry, that's actually a problem, right? And many of us make ourselves really comfortable with this idea of perpetually being hungry. Now, don't get me wrong, if you were eating considerably less than you were eating before because you know that's, you know, you need to be in a caloric deficit and you are you've calculated the right macros and the right calorie intake to be in a healthy caloric deficit and you feel hungry to a degree that's going to be natural if you go from you know if your body needs 3,000 calories to keep up with yourself but you've been eating 5,000 calories and now you're going down to eating 2,700 calories you are going to feel hungry having cut your calories by 2,300 it's going to be inevitable however if you are struggling to really adapt your diet to being able to feel full and satisfied, it's more likely that you're gonna do things like snack or just binge or whatever. So I think it's really important to work your meals and, and plan meals that actually may be high volume or just allow for you to feel full. So incorporating more things like fiber, protein, things that will just help you feel more full at the beginning or just throughout the day, right? And if you are somebody who is a snacker, work with that, you know? I know some people will be like, oh, cut out snacks. And this is why you can't take all weight loss advice as universal. People will be like, oh, you know, stick to just having two meals a day, make sure it's two full meals and don't snack and cut everything out. If you are a snacker and you know you like to nibble nibble throughout the day, get your nibbles and make sure that the nibbles are healthy or they fit into your calories and they fit into your sugar and pay attention to all of those things, track it, but make your weight loss journey work for you. If you don't, it's not going to be sustainable. If you find yourself having disdain for the fact that you need to live a certain way, you're not going to live that way. And so be encouraged. If you are hating your current diet and you hate the fact that you have to eat this and you hate your workouts, right? Change them change them. Don't just put yourself through it because, hey, it's effective and it's worked for other people. If you want this to be sustainable, you have to do something which is enjoyable to a degree. And so that's creating recipes, which yes, fit into your macros. That's just the discipline part of it. That's the reality that you cannot escape. You can't just satisfy yourself in every aspect. However, it's important to look at ways that you can find synergy between your desires and your needs, especially the needs for this journey that you're going on. And so find a way to vary and create variations of your favorite foods that fit into your weight loss or your diet goals. Try to increase the volume of the food. And when I say volume, it's like half a burger, whilst that's calorie dense, the food itself is small. I could probably hold half a burger like in my hand, right? Or a whole burger in my hands. That's not a lot of food. However, a whole bowl of like, vegetables with rice, like a burrito bowl, right? You've got rice, you've got vegetables, you can stock up on loads of vegetables because vegetables don't have a lot of calories. And then add in a good like source of protein, 
Top it with like your favorite sauce. Season it in a way that you really like. Don't be afraid of the seasonings, girl. Please. I'm sick of seeing dry chicken, dry beef, and dry rice, and dry broccoli. We don't want it. We need our food to be flavorful. Make your food flavorful. If that's what's gonna make it enjoyable, then do that, all right? Throw those things in there. I know sodium can be high, so maybe the salt. Listen, our people are battling with hypertension and those things. Put the salt aside. But it's important to really think to yourself, how can I make this enjoyable? How can I make this filling? How can I make this something that I can actually enjoy? Now, my last point, and I've been so guilty of doing this, right? Is being a couch potato. Now, listen, 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 listen. Listen, 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 listen. Like I was talking about with total daily energy expenditure, right? Your total daily energy expenditure is made up of your basal metabolic rate, which is basically at the baseline. If you were just to lie here like this and just be breathing, how much is your body going to burn? And then the second factor into your TDEE is the thermic effect of food. And so the food that you eat requires calories to actually burn them. And this is actually why a lot of people recommend a high protein diet when you are trying to lose weight, because protein actually requires the most amount of calories to be able to burn them, right? And so to be able to digest your food, to be able to convert your food from food into energy requires energy but then also you have your physical activities going to the gym the hit workouts the list workouts so essentially the physical activity that elevates your heart rate and then you have your non-exercise activity thermogenesis which is what i'm doing right now all this fidgeting right uh tapping your foot picking up writing not that that has loads of energy, <laughs> but also going on walks, right? And so it can be very tempting to just go to the gym, come home and just slump, have a nap, another nap, eat and then have a nap because we are so tired from having to work out, right? However, that does absolutely nothing for your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is a huge part or a, a considerable part of the total amount of energy you're going to expend throughout the day. And so a great way to kind of improve the amount that you are actually burning and the best way to have a very accurate TDEE calculation is to make sure that even after your workout you are actually still active and so especially if you are somebody who works a sedentary job finding ways to incorporate activity into your day finding ways to incorporate movement into your day can really help you burn calories without really having to think about it or without feeling like ah I'm really doing a lot of extra work here and that could be incorporating even like five ten minute walks into your day choosing to walk to the station instead of getting the bus or cleaning doing the grocery shop instead of getting it delivered to you, just small things which can improve like your step count. Just finding a way to incorporate movement into your day can really up your neat non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which can in turn help you burn more calories throughout the day. And so I would really say, try your best to not be a couch potato, as tiring as working out can be, trust me, I hear it. It's important to still keep yourself active. I think that the best way to think about this is the people who we consider to be, I guess, the healthiest, and even though this isn't the most, you know, amazing analogy, but the people that we do consider to be the most healthy, not only do they work out, they also make better lifestyle choices, right? They choose to walk more. And as somebody who has suffered from like having very low energy levels, and is sometimes just a little bit lazy, if I'm going to be honest, I don't always make the choice to like walk instead of catching the bus. But since I've adjusted my mindset towards losing weight to listen girl just try and be active even the smallest of thing a three minute walk not you know rolling your eyes oh we've got to walk for six minutes or we've got to walk to this place actually taking the challenge even if you have to take it slowly because you know i think the more overweight you are as well people underestimate how much energy it actually takes to move your body and how much effort it can feel like it takes as well um and sometimes even the the little embarrassment that surrounds having to do certain things it can feel quite intimidating like what people may think taking the stairs you know a couple flights up is super simple but for us it's like you kind of feel a little bit embarrassed because like you'll be walking with people and you're out of breath and then your legs hurt and you have to get to the top of the stairs and you're out of breath and no one else is out of breath and then you might even start sweating and it just feels a little bit embarrassing but at the end of the day 
it's a great way to improve things like your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And this is why I really spend time talking about gaining gym confidence and the mindset that goes into losing weight, especially whilst I am still big, because I think a lot of people talk about it, but they don't understand the hardship sometimes that goes into it. And this is not a sub story. This is not me making it more than it is. But generally, I feel like genuinely, I feel like fat people can kind of relate that like certain things are just way easier said than done. And as much as people are be like, just do this, just go for 10,000 steps. It's hard. My ankles hurt. My knees hurt. Please. My back hurts. Please. <laughs> so trust me, girl, I can relate. And I'm not saying these things because they get easy, but I am saying them because they need to be done. And you're worth the investment. You're worth doing it. And as much as these things are hard now, they won't be hard forever. And I'm here to support. I'm here to at least be somebody who you can relate to and somebody who will openly talk about these struggles um, so that we can all kiki, gist and cry sometimes together because it's not easy. And I, I don't think this journey is easy. I don't think it's meant to be easy. I think it's one of the hardest things that you can really do. But even though it's hard, it's necessary. And so I hope that this video has actually been helpful. I hope that you did enjoy it. I hope that for someone it maybe was comforting or even, you know, assist in a little bit of course correction. Um, I'm definitely always taking notes of these things as well and trying to, you know, implement them in my own life. And hopefully I can create content that can help you on your journey. Please let me know if there are any videos you would like to see me create. I'll be happy to get working on them. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Definitely give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and turn on your notifications. And thank you so much again to Audible for sponsoring today's video. I cannot believe your girl has, is it an answered prayer? It is. <laughs> you know, when you work with certain people, you see certain names in your inbox and you're thinking, Ariana, what are you doing here? <laughs> no, but literally, like, it is a dream come true because I've been, I love Audible, I love Audible off. So, yeah, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. Please definitely check out that link in my description. Support the girl, okay? But also, go and find some great stuff on Audible. I don't talk about things that I think are rubbish, okay? And actually, why not join me in listening to Sleep Sound with Jamie Dornan and let me know what you think. And as always, stay beautiful and stay blessed. Mwah.